All right, we're back and we're playing some Ghostface. One of my, probably my main at this point, as we probably all know. If you've been keeping up with the channel, there's been a lot of videos on my man's Ghostface here. So we're just gonna start right off with the commentary. We have we always use corrupt intervention because that'll show you where they spawn because they will always spawn on gems. We have Insidious, so we go up and, and just M1 them. We don't need to waste our time stalking. We got to get into chase as soon as possible. Now we're gonna just hard push. She drops the pallet. That's perfect for us. We're going going ahead and break it. We stay on her. We know that they're gonna be on the other side because they're most likely you know notice that they're in, that she's in chase on that side. So they're gonna just hop on the next gen, probably in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and just follow through with the chase. The problem here though is that I should have broke the pallet earlier and just gotten my spirit fury um, charged up. But I, I was trying to mind game the uh, the vault here, but it, it's just not a good idea. And then the uh, the vault speed was just was just the thing slowing me down like the entire time. So if that pallet drops, I would just recommend breaking it as soon as possible. There's just no reason to try to mind game that if they're gonna have that window right next to it. It's just a waste. So it, it did cost me to gen, unfortunately. So I go up here and I go ahead and uh, activate our night shroud and lean off this little pallet here. Um, we actually want them to reveal us so we can just break out of it without uh, completely exposing them because we didn't want to actually expose. Um, we just want to get enough uh, stock on them so that once we're close enough we can just get the free hit. Now thankfully we have our wallet add-on um, and then we go ahead and break that pallet on us and we knock them down straight after. So yeah, I mean I have plans of making a ghost face guide. Um, I play him just a little bit differently than everybody else does. Um, I know some people look at SK and think that's like the pinnacle of Ghostface, which is perfectly fine. I mean, you can you can say that, you can agree with that. Um, but his play style with Ghostface is just very different uh, than other Ghostface players, especially like myself. Um, I am more of an aggressive player. So you notice I, I go after Vittorio for just a second, but I've realized I want to save him for later. Because we want to go ahead and defend our hook here. So we wait, and then we get the, uh, the hit there, so they have to go mend. And then we go after uh, after Nancy here. I was trying to figure out where Steve went, but unfortunately I lost him. So I was trying to like uh, cut her off here, which is this is how I use Night Shroud. I'll activate it when they lose sight of me so that they don't know where I'm going to come from. I listen in to their footsteps, their breathing, or if they're injured, the cries of pain. You listen, 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 and boom. I missed the hit. But guess what? She didn't know I was there. Now, if I think it's because I have my sensitivity maxed out, so like, so I'll move the the right stick and it, it'll mess me up, unfortunately. So I might have to reduce that. But anyway, so going ahead and hitting her, we're gonna run off and go for Vittorio because we notice they want to touch that middle gen, which is perfectly fine. Now here we're gonna just push him because we want to make sure we get this pallet out the way. That is a very strong pallet and it's kind of impossible to mind game. Um, if he did go for that window, it would have been a guaranteed knockdown, but unfortunately, he decides to run off, you know, and then survivors, they love to get cocky, so he thinks he's spinning around, and that's what cost him uh, that hook state. Which you'll notice with survivors, they love to get cocky. They love getting cocky, and that's exactly what you take advantage of, because they like to think they're good at the game, and they think they're quote-unquote juicing you, when in reality... If you're smart and you're using, say you're running my build, um, you're trying to force those pallets out anyway because you want to get that Spirit Fury charged. So, we notice that they, of course, once again, survivors think they're good for some reason, so they start doing some kind of crouching for some magical reason. Really doesn't do anything. Um, we try to get the stock there and we break, and when you see, we, I swing, I break myself out of Night Shroud because we wanted to go on uh, off of cooldown and we also were going to get revealed anyway. So I'd rather just, you know, get the cooldown, um, which apparently it's faster when you break yourself out of it. Um, and then we knock down Vittorio, easy peasy. We go ahead and pick him up, and I think we, we're going to put him... Uh, I was hoping there'd be a basement, but there was not. They actually was on the other side, so we have to put him here. Um, and we go ahead and break this pallet. Even though we can mind game this pallet, we just want to charge our Spirit Fury anyway. Um, so we also have uh, an ability to see here. We're going to go ahead and mark... Um, uh, our Steve here. We do have Spirit Fury, so this also removes another pallet out of the equation while simultaneously getting a knockdown, and because of that other pallet, he was of course going to go for window. That was his only choice. You knock him straight down, and because he is also got hooked as well, we're going to put him on the hook um, right next to me. 
Now, normally I would leave them on the ground and defend the hook, but I figured, considering I got two people on death hook, I was like, I'll just take advantage. Um, I was trying to get the stock there, but just the lean was not coming out, so we just kind of sit there. We're defending our hook now. Um, we know that they're going to most likely be on the very farthest gen or the middle gen. Um, and the whole point of these commentaries is so that we can review my gameplay, um, see if you learn something, I can learn something as well from, oh, from analyzing my gameplay to see where I went right and where I went wrong. So we noticed that they went for the unhook here. Um, we're just going to go ahead and hit him again for the endurance. Um, and then we go after him next. But we notice that they're on the gen here. Now the problem with, the, with, the, with this gen um, is that it just had a ton of progress. And Call of Brian, being as it's been nerfed, it only does about 125%. Um, if I had gotten the hook next to that generator, then it would have been a lot uh, stronger, but I was not able to. But I was listening to their cries of pain, once again, using Night Shroud differently. We don't know, it, it, people forget that Ghostface, uh, his abilities is both being able to crouch, stalk, and also go insidious. So obviously, we're taking advantage of one of those three factors. So... We use the Insidious to try to um, throw the survivors off so they don't know where we're coming from and that's exactly where I went with Vittorio and because I know this map so well um, and then of course we take advantage of our stock here. Um, what I should have done here was just break out of it. I shouldn't have uh, like gotten um, greedy with the mark there because I was not remotely close enough to get any value off of that, off of that stock and you're going to uh, see that it's going to actually cost me. But this kid, I think, knows that I have Spirit Fury or something like that, I think. Because, like, they tend to start, quote-unquote, pre-dropping. Um, thinking that's some kind of play, when it really isn't. We all know that. Um, so I just, I, I just out in the open to stalk, just to get the extra points. Um, you don't have to stalk injured people, but you can. I saw SK kind of do that to get extra points, so I just started employing that on my play style as well. It does give you a little bit extra, which is pretty cool. Um, so we go and slug her. We want to go check on the gen again, but they just run off within seconds, so... Um, I, I, I was considering chasing her, but then I was like, ah, it's probably not worth it. Like, we want to make sure we at least get, um, Steve out the way, so the, that's who we want to kill next. Um, to completely push the game to our side. So, good, good pallet dodge. He had life, unfortunately, but we were still able to catch up to him. Um, he has nowhere to go. Um, so we hit him with our little Assassin's Creed. Nice. <laughs> that was beautiful. So we just went ahead and just gotten our kill. I, I'd rather I'd rather get the kill <clears throat> and push it to my side rather than uh, than uh, giving them another chance to get away. Especially when they're just like gen rushing this hard. Like you're just gonna have to to uh, do that. Now you don't have to run Call of Brian. I was trying Call of Brian because that was the original build that I was running. Um, but I'm thinking Deadlock just gets just a little bit more value. Now this is perfect because there's no pallet over there, so we can just go ahead and break that, and she's forced to run that way. You have to be very mindful when you're playing as the killer. If you are new and you're watching this video, you need to understand that breaking pallets needs to be purposeful. If you know that there's a dead zone and you're gonna like, and they're on that side of the corner of the map with a dead zone, you must kick that pallet on the side to force them to go that way. Now you're going to see me trying to get some stalks here because I'd rather just save her for last, but for some reason the lean just was not coming out. I, I really was confused. Yeah, and then also, I think it's because I move while I was stalking. But I, I figure if I stand still, they might reveal, so I was trying to kind of get like that middle ground. I did not mean the mark there, so that was really unfortunate. You kind of have to be careful with that. Um, so that's kind of where I fumbled. I should have like, uh, shouldn't have gotten too, uh, too hard with the lean there. Um... Now there is an add-on you can use where you can like walk faster while stalking. Sometimes I'll run that just so that I don't have to lean all the time. Um, <clears throat> and um, also if you uh, are used to stalking with the, uh, like with like normally, then having the camera might be detrimental too. Just keep that in mind. Okay. So we're pushing her through this pallet. She likes to pretend she's crouching her tea bag and whatever bullshit. So I just gone ahead and knocked her down. I just kept saying, no, no, you suck. You know what I'm saying? You, you stink. And make sure I tea bag her too. Um, so I probably should have left her on the ground, but I was just figuring why not just get the extra points and get the hook. Um, Cause I already had them in my favor. Now here's where I do make a mistake. Because they're it, like because it's one gen, they have the choice between getting the gen done or they have the choice of unhooking. 
Now the problem is, is that because I, I went um, so far as to go check the gens, um, then it left the hook open um, for them to unhook, and then that just basically left me with another chase to deal with, which is not a good idea. Like I should have kicked that gen if I was going to do that, and just ran straight through the gate and started going over there. But be, but I started to look around and, and do other stuff. So that's not the play that you want to do here, especially when you can um, probably easily get the 4K. And I had figured they might run toward me on the side, which of course they did. Um, and so because of this area, like there is um, somewhat of a dead zone. There's only like one pallet, but they're most likely just going to drop if they're injured. You have no choice. <clears throat> so from this side, I, I was trying to push her toward the uh, toward the gate again, because the gate does not have a pallet, um, except I think one by the desk, which is we're probably going to break that one too. Um, but yeah, I did make a blatant mistake. I also had the gen that I kicked up there. I probably could have kept chasing, even if I like, uh, even if I had gotten the down or not. Like I probably could have killed them. But with the meta that survivors are running nowadays, you tend to you tend to see a lot of adrenaline and shit like that, which completely just flips the script on, on pressure. It's very cheese ball, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You, this is what you have to deal with as a killer. So we go ahead and, and activate our Insidious. They somehow was zooming onto the other side of the wall, which is very strange. I think because I got stuck. I tried to go for the swing there, but I just kind of gave up midway and just turned around. I was like, yeah, they got it. Like, they somehow are going to keep making that vault. This game could be uh, pretty bullshit, so I'm not surprised. So obviously, Adrenaline kicks in. We got the free hit because this one's just flying up the stairs trying to celebrate. I had forgotten that this is a Nancy player, so they play scummy like always. So you're going to go ahead and uh, go after her. Now, they like to pre-drop for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but, you know, I just went ahead and uh, just went through. Now, I didn't even have... I don't know why they cranked the door. Like, that was kind of stupid. Um, I actually heard them near me when I was going for this. Unfortunately, like, I honestly think it's because I didn't fully mark. Um, no, because I fully marked around the staircase that, like, earlier in the match, it cost me this extra kill. Um, which is quite unfortunate. I really like, uh, just take note of that. See where I made mistakes and try to learn from it as a Ghostface player. I already see them there, so I won't be able to stalk them fast enough. The door is like two feet away. So I try to pretend I'm friends with them or some bullshit, but at the end of the day, I was like, yeah, they just got lucky because I made a mistake. But that's unfortunately the reality of Killer. If you make a single mistake at this MMR, you're just going to end up losing a kill at, at some point or losing at least two to three gens just from a single mistake. And that's what kind of makes uh, Killer can be fun, but also simultaneously extremely frustrating because you can be so good, but then it just, uh, just a single slip up can literally just change the entire tide of the battle. So it's pretty annoying, but nice. You know, we got the free hatch uh, closed and we were able to you know, tell them no, hit them on the hook and stuff like that. But yeah, that's the commentary for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I, I know I have because I feel like uh, you got to keep your keep your uh, eyes peeled for the stalking meter on, on your survivors. That's a little lesson for the day. And be careful with the Philly camera because if you lean and Philly, you might accidentally overstock. So let's keep, stay tuned for a uh, ghost face guide. It's coming soon, eventually. And uh, have a good one, guys.